Hey everybody, welcome to another segment of A Dude Talking About Film. I'm a dude who talks about film and I use regular language. I am going to talk about a movie that I just recently finished. It only has three episodes, y'all. It's called Killer Sally. This is a documentary that was released by a director named Nanette Burstein, who I recently saw on Showtime a documentary that she did about the great Robert Evans from the novel or book uh, biography, The Kid Stays in the Picture. I loved that film. Um, I did not not like this film. I like this film, and if you like documentaries, there were parts of it I really liked, y'all, but there were parts of it that I just did not care for, and I want to go into that. Um, this director is obviously a very good director. At first, I was like, who are these people? I had seen this on Netflix, I didn't really pay attention to it because um, it just didn't strike me as something I wanted to watch. But then I looked a little bit at the description of the three-episode documentary series, and I went, okay. And so I started to watch it, and I was intrigued by the fact that these two people, a uh, married couple, were both from the military, and they were both um, bodybuilders, by the way. Spoiler alerts if you haven't seen this, and please, please subscribe if you like the channel. Um, so in 1995, Ray McNeil, who was married to Sally McNeil, lived in Oceanside, California, and she killed him with a shotgun. It was on Valentine's evening, and there was depicted in this documentary a history of abuse by her account only. Uh, the only people that were interviewed that were not Sally, were people that were friends with the late Ray McNeil and her children for the most part. The attorneys on the case, um, again, spoiler alert, the attorneys on the case for the prosecution and the defense were interviewed. And what I did like about this documentary is you definitely come away with a feeling that she was definitely the victim, the battered wife, uh, her accounts of how he would... Uh, in an enraged state of anger, beat her and choke her and beat the children and accounts in the documentary by her adult children now of how he used to beat them. I just got the sense that the steroids were really messing with him. The steroids were really taking a toll on his psyche and on his temperament, which is what you hear about steroids. Um, so that was kind of the, the momentum of the documentary up until it got to the point where other people in the film that were interviewed started to talk about Sally McNeil's personality. And as the director laid all this out, you get the sense that she was um, raised in a home which she was pretty much abandoned and really had no direction, could not afford college, uh, went into the military, and that's where she met Ray, Ray McNeil. And then they moved to the West Coast and got into the sport of bodybuilding when the sport was relatively new. And she even did some, like, homemade wrestling tapes with some guy, and he won not a huge competition, but the guy was definitely... You know, you get an insight into this documentary about the world of bodybuilding, and apparently he was motivated by watching the Arnold Schwarzenegger film Pumping Iron with Lou Ferrigno, and the guy looked the part. I mean, he was humongously built, and he, you know, had a regimented schedule, and so did she. So you get the sense that these two people were, you know, fairly uh, dialed into the world of bodybuilding. They were taking steroids up the wazoo. He was taking more than she was. And again, from her account, you get the feeling that, you know, this guy was just like steroided out all the time and just a huge uh, explosion uh, in this family of four. And then on this fateful evening, her testimony is that he was going to beat her again. He was going to choke her, was choking her, and then she went and got the shotgun. Again, spoiler alert, and she shot him, and then he was going to come at her again, and then she shot him again. Here's where things turn, because you hear the interviews with the prosecution in which the forensics and investigations that were done about the murder 
what it later became a, a second degree murder charge in which she did prison time. Again, spoiler alert, you learn that there was no possible way that in this particular on this particular evening that Ray McNeil could have done what she alleged he did. And so her whole defense of self-defense goes out the window. When she was being interviewed, she did not have an attorney, not very intelligent. Like, why would she talk to the police? Uh, if you're brought up on a charge like this, you don't say anything, number one. Number two, um, her testimony just didn't ring true. And even her decision to testify, according to her defense attorney, was a huge mistake. So fast forward, Ray McNeil is dead. And he had this interesting friend that is interviewed throughout this that talks. And other people, including at this time in their marriage, he was on his way out. He was having an affair. His friend said that he was going to leave Sally because she was so violent and so out of control. And there are episodes described in this documentary where she would go off, beat up a girl that uh, she thought he was having an affair with, send a threatening phone call to this uh, gal that he was with at the time he was shot. It was like she knew he was cheating. She had a shotgun. She was so enraged. And throughout the documentary, you hear accounts of this temper that she had. It plagued her in the military. She, had, she wasn't even allowed to re-enlist because she had such a volatile personality and anger issue. So this is what this um, documentary revealed. The issue that I have with it, which is why, although I, I loved, again, The Kid Stays in the Picture, I, have, I haven't seen many of the other films by Nanette Burstein, um, I didn't really think the director had a handle on where exactly she was going with this. So I didn't understand why she devoted a whole film to somebody that appeared to have huge anger issues and killed her husband in cold blood. So the dude talking about film is going to give this film a... 7 out of 10, yo. I wasn't going to endorse it, but I changed my mind. So there you go. Obviously, the film is a good, well-done film. The production value is good. I guess I could say that the director kind of leaves it up to the viewer to decide whether you believe that Sally McNeil actually acted in self-defense because of all the allegations of abuse, which her children even say occurred. But you don't really get the sense that the director is really pushing uh, very much for you to get all the facts surrounding this kind of Jekyll and Hyde personality that didn't come out at all in her testimony where she was being asked about this relationship. There's so much other uncovered stuff about her that was brought out, but not nearly enough. If the, if the director really wanted to make it a toss-up between was this a marriage in which the fighting was initiated by her, certainly doesn't mean she should have ever been hit as a woman, ever been abused, but the way that the friend talks about Sally McNeil, the way that the prosecutor talks about Sally McNeil, you get the sense that she was extremely volatile, extremely physically violent her whole life, particularly in the military and after the military, her service, and you just don't really know. And that was the problem I had with this. I think the director needed to take a stand, but again, maybe the director leaves it up to us to decide based on the information presented in this film if we believe that Sally McNeil did do it or she didn't do it. And for that, I gave it a seven. All right, everybody, this has been a dude talking about film. If you like what you hear, subscribe. Peace.